Hello, good test takers of the world. This is Andrew Valens with Satellite Prep. And now today, as you've all been waiting for, I'm going to be doing the Blue Book Application Test Preview Module 1 Math Numbers 1 through 7. The reason I'm doing these is because they don't provide the answer key. It's just a chance for you to preview the style of the um, Blue Book app, the digital SAT. So you're probably burning to know, did I get these right? So I definitely encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to take these seven questions by yourself after you've downloaded the Blue Book app. And then you can watch this stunningly entertaining video. So are we ready? Let's go. Number one, the scatter plot shows the relationship between variables x and y aligned for best fit and the data is shown at x equals 32 right there. Which of the following is the y predicted by the line of best fit? That means you got to go to that line and see what the y value is. And it looks like it's right around there. Be careful. Look at your scale. Look at your units. This is about 2.5. So the closest answer would be 2.4. Click that. Move on. Next question, two nearby trees are perpendicular to the ground, which is flat. Thank you for letting us know that. One of these trees is 10 feet tall, boom, and has a shadow that is five feet tall, boom. Always draw things when you have potential to do that. At the same time, the shadow of the other tree is two feet tall. So we don't know the height of that tree, but we do know the shadow is two feet tall. How tall in feet is the other tree? So this is all about setting up a lovely proportion. So it looks like the height of the tree to its shadow on this particular day has a two to one ratio, right? So this has to have the same ratio. So we would just double that two to one and the height of that tree. How tall is that other tree? The answer is four. So let's go ahead and click that because it's very joyful to click a right answer, isn't it? Let's move on to number three. So this is a grid in question. The y-intercept of the graph y equals negative 6x minus 32 in the xy plane is 0 comma y. What is the value of y? So they want the y-intercept. How do we get the y-intercept? Well, in order to get to get the y-intercept, we make x equal to 0. You must have learned that once upon a time in math class. So we're going to just make this x equal to 0, negative 6 times 0 minus 32. The 0 kills that, so y equals negative 32. The answer is negative 32. So let's go ahead and punch that in because it's fun. Next question, figure A and B are both regular polygons. The word regular means they all sides have the same length key word there. The sum of the perimeter of figure A and the perimeter of figure B is 63. The equation 3x plus 6y equals 63 represents this situation where x is the number of sides of figure A and y is the number of sides of figure B. Which statement is the best interpretation of the 6, right? So they're asking us in this equation, what does this 6 mean? Well, if we're talking about perimeter, and it tells us that x has to do with figure A, and the y has to do with figure B, right? That And the 63 is the total inches. It must mean that if x is the number of sides of figure A, it must mean that there's 3 inches per side plus 6 inches per side, right? So the 6 is the length of each side on figure B. Each side of figure B has a length of six inches. All right, so that's the answer there. Number five. Oh my God, we're five sevenths of the way there. I just did the math. Store A sells raspberries for 550 a pint and blackberries for three bucks a pint. So store B sells raspberries for 650 a pint and blackberries for eight bucks a pint. A certain purchase of raspberry and blackberries will cost 37 at store A or 66 at store B. How many pints of blackberries in this purchase? Okay, so far of all the questions, this is going to take the longest because what we're dealing with here, friends, is systems of equations, right? So this is the kind of question where it's a word problem and you have to set up your own two equations. 
the equation for store A and the equation for store B. You want to get good at doing that. So here's how it goes. So if store A is 550 per pint of raspberries, I'm going to call it 5.5 R and three bucks per pint of blackberries. So plus $3 per pint of blackberries. And it's going to total $37 at store A. That's our first equation. Our second equation is going to be blackberries. So we'll write it in blue. I'm sorry, not blackberries, just store B. So store B, the raspberries now are 650 a pint. So 650 per pint of raspberries plus $8 per pint of blackberries. Looks like store B is higher end. Um, so that's $66 for the same, so that. Okay, so would you rather shop at store A or store B? Well, it depends on the quality of the fruits, but they want to know how many pints of blackberries are in this purchase. So the idea here is that there's a certain number of raspberries and blackberries that's the same for both equations, even though they'll cost different amounts of money. And we want to know what they are. So we want to do a systems of equations elimination, right? Elimination. And did I tell you this question would take a while? So we're doing it. When we do elimination, we have to cancel out the more convenient of the two, right? I look at these numbers. I don't like those decimals. I'm not going to do it. I'm actually just going to go, I'm going to multiply this whole first thing by an eight and this whole second thing by a three. That's just the way I like to roll because that's going to make this the Bs cancel out. So eight times 550 is going to be 44R plus 24B equals 296. Now three times everything is gonna be 19.5 R plus 24 B, see the Bs will cancel, equals 198. If we subtract the first equation from the second equation, 44 minus 19.5 is 24.5 R. The Bs cancel, equals 98. And we know we're on the right track, because what's going to happen is if we're going to divide both sides by the 24.5, we're going to get a nice, healthy whole number of four. That means that there were four pints of raspberries in each situation. The answer is not four, though, because we got to always golden rule, check back with the question. The question does not want raspberries. The question wants blackberries. So we got to go back and pick an equation. Let's take the first one. 5.5R plus 3B equals 37, and we're going to plug in our R, which is 4, so 5.5 times 4, sorry for my handwriting, plus 3B equals 37. 5.5 times 4 is 22, plus 3B equals 37, and if we do the math, we're going to get B equals 5. I skipped a couple steps there, but you can handle it, because you're tough. All right, so the answer is 5. So, Let's move on to the next one, number six. Oh, this one's going to be quick. It says, how many distinct real solutions does this given equation have? Now, there's a way where you can go down the rabbit hole and get crazy, or there's the simple way. Remember, when you have something squared, you can unsquare it by taking the square root of both sides. So if I wanted to take the square root of that and the square root of that, what do I notice? Oh my god, I have the square root of negative four. That's impossible. So there are no solutions that will actually work here, right? So that was a quickie. If you understood how to do that, you're done. Next and last questions. Question. For the function, f of zero equals 86. And for each increase in x by one, the value of f of x decreases by 80%. What is the value of f of two? So what this means is f of zero equals 86. So that means when x is zero, y is 86. Each increase of x by one will decrease the value of f of x, which is y, by 80%. And when you decrease something by 80%, that's the same thing as taking 20% of it. So you just want to take 86 and multiply it times 0.2 to get 20% of that 86. And what you're going to get is 17.2, but we're not done, right? We're not even done because they want f of, sorry, my pen isn't working, bear with me, technical difficulties, we can handle it. f of two 
is we just want to do it again, right? We want to take this number and decrease it by 80%, which means we're going to take the 17.2 and multiply it by 20%. And when we do that, we are going to get 3.44. And we might be thinking, oh my God, that can't be right. It's a weird decimal. Well, don't be afraid of weird decimals. They're people too. And that is your final answer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned on this YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Subscribe, blah, blah, blah. More fun things coming your way as you prepare for your digital SAT. Happy to be in your corner. Peace out.